Hello, this is Mike Rayner from eWrench. This is the second video in a series of installing Ubuntu LAMP Server 12.10. In this video, the outcomes will be to set the fully qualified domain name on this Ubuntu 12.10 server, verify the Apache web server is working using a desktop computer or a virtual desktop, modify the host file on the Ubuntu desktop where the network has no DNS or domain name server, and update the Ubuntu server including the Linux kernel, verify the PHP operation, and verify the MySQL operation. Requirements are an installed Ubuntu 12.10 server which is covered in Ubuntu LAMP Server 12.10 Part 1, additional desktop computer hardware or virtual. In this video the Ubuntu 12.10 desktop is shown, but you could use any machine including a Windows desktop, and both of the com above computers are on the same LAN or local area network. Additional info, we've got some install preparation, some basic security, and Ubuntu General security. The network is a wild place, and especially if this computer is exposed to the internet, then you've really got to lock down security, especially on a server, since it's got quite a few more ports open than a normal desktop. After installing Quanto Quetzal Server, you may have to remove the install CD. To do that, simply go up to Storage, where it has this CD here. Just simply go over here and just choose Host Drive D, and that will have an empty CD. So that's all you have to do to remove it. Just simply click OK and then go ahead and start your virtual server. Here's our Ubuntu 12.10 servers restarted, so let's log in. Make sure I've got the focus on the machine. Now one of the error messages that showed up as the machine was loading up was says could not identify fully qualified domain name. So didn't see that. Let's we'll do a sudo service Apache to restart. There's the uh, error message. Could not reliably determine the server's fully qualified domain name. This is fairly easy to f fix. So let's let's fix this right now. The situation is in a file called hosts. So before we make any changes to this file, let's back the file up in case we make a mistake or something. And to do that, we do a sudo cp for copy etc, because that's the directory which is in hosts. We will host.bckup. That will back it up. And let's change to the etc directory and do an ls and there's a file hosts.bck so it's backed up so let's go ahead and change the original host file so we'll go sudo and we'll use a text editor I like prefer to use a text editor called vim we'll open it up with the text editor what we'll have to do is ch change the second line so we'll take the arrow key and go here. Now before we can start editing we have to key in I. So just key in I and you'll notice that it says insert down to bottom. I'm going to put in some spaces here just, just to give it some spaces and, and type in the host name or computer name again. In this case Quantil Quetzal SRB. Now I'm going to give it a fully qualified domain name. In this case I'm going to say just personal dot private. So that's dot personal dot private. If you have one you can go ahead and uh, use your own domain name or whatever. You, you can make one of your own up. Once this is done simply hit escape and then colon and then right quit. So if we want to check and make sure that it was written correctly, we simply do a cat hosts. You'll see that it's uh, actually been changed. 
and that's it for uh, changing. Well, let's let's verify that that it has been changed. I'll use the up arrow key to go back to the uh, Apache 2 restart. Notice that there is no error message, so that's been changed. Normally servers have a static IP or internet protocol address. A static IP address allows other machines to connect to your server regularly because the IP address of the server is unchanged. One way of making sure that your server's address does not change is to res use reserved DHCP or dynamic host configuration protocol. If you know your machine's IP address and MAC or media access control address, you can set up Reserve DHCP on your router or DHCP server. I find this a lot of times easier to do for the all when using these clones. While configuring a static IP address or setting up Reserve DHCP is beyond the scope of this video, using the IF config command will get you the IP address and MAC address of your guest Ubuntu server. To get your IP address, simply key in IF config. Here you'll see your IP address is 192.168.121 and your MAC address is also in this case is listed as a hardware address HWADDR 080027EAC41B. Now this is not the MAC address of your host machine but it's actually a MAC address created for you by VirtualBox for your guest computer. If you're going to use Reserve DHCP, take both of these addresses down. We will be using the internet IP address at a later point in this video. To verify that the web server works on our Ubuntu 12.10 server, we need to use another computer, either a virtual machine or a hardware machine. In this case, I'm going to use a virtual machine because it's a lot easier for me to show on the screen. In this case, it's going to be called Q Ubuntu 02, but it has to be on the same network. So if you recall, the server used a bridge adapter in VirtualBox, so this virtual desktop also has to use a bridge adapter so they can be on the same LAN or local area network. Then start the desktop. To verify the web server works, we need to open up the Firefox web browser. If you recall, we have the IP address of the server, 192.168.1.21, and we'll go to that. Here it works, but let's try entering the fully qualified domain name. It was quantoquetzalserve.personnel.private. When we go to that, we find that the server is not found. The reason for that is there's no domain name server here at this private network or this personal network. The way to fix that so that this desktop can find this server or this fully qualified domain name is to edit the host file on the desktop. In order to edit the host file, all you have to do is go to the terminal window, open up the terminal, Before we actually do anything, let's copy, make a copy of the host file to etc host.vck backup. Now let's go move to the uh, etc directory. a list and if we look up here we see we should see a host backup file if everything's been done right and there it is so now in this case we're going to use the get it text editor because the desktop doesn't come with vin get it's a little bit easier to use not as powerful, but a little bit easier to use if you're not used to using text editor. We'll use sudo get it hosts. And you have to use sudo here because if you don't use sudo, 
that you won't be able to save anything in this directory. So we'll take and underneath the uh, name of the computer we'll put in the IP address of the server of our Quaxel server which is 192.168.121 hit a tab. Now we're going to put in the fully qualified domain name or FQDN double check and make sure everything's spelled correctly otherwise uh, it may not work. In this case we've got it looks like everything's okay and once that's done we'll save it and let's go ahead and close actually we'll have to quit and we could restart the we have to restart the server. Now you can use something like sudo uh, service networking restart but I found that that doesn't work very well in a virtual machine, a hardware machine, I would probably do that. So let's do a restart. Once it's restarted, we'll go to the web browser. Here to web browser, we'll enter the uh, fully qualified domain name. And we see that it works this time. If you think it's just a thing. We'll just change one letter here and hit enter and you'll see that the server is not found but if we do the E you'll see that it works. In this section we're going to update the server and get the latest updates and upgrades. So we're going to do a sudo go to the terminal window or command line window in, in Ubuntu virtual server and we're going to do sudo apt-get update of course you may ask for your password it will spin for a while once you've got a list of all the update packages we're going to do an upgrade so we'll get the in this case it will be sudo apt-get upgrade. Again, this will take a while. It's going to spin. If you want to, you can do a dash Y in front of the upgrade. You won't have to answer this. Do you want to continue Y or no? But in this case, I should prefer to show every step, so we'll just type in Y here. Depending on your network speed, that's how quick this will happen because it's got to download quite a number of different files to complete your upgrade. We'll come back when the machine is fully upgraded and then we'll do a, what's called a kernel upgrade. Here we are. Everything has been upgraded. If you want to upgrade just your kernel, you use a dist upgrade. And usually kernel upgrades are held back on servers simply because there may be some problems with some software that you install that's non-standard. So in this case we're going to click yes but this is a new machine. There shouldn't be any problem with anything so we're going to upgrade to kernel. And this is the Linux kernel and this is going to take quite a few minutes and then when we come back it will also need to be restarted or rebooted. Now here we have the updated Linux image. If we, if we want to go ahead and remove the old we can use an auto remove automatically but in this case I'm just going to do a sudo reboot just to show you that everything is still working so now we've got Ubuntu 12.10 server running and updated. In this section I'm going to verify that PHP works in order to do that we're going to write a short file, a PHP file, that you can access from your desktop browser. So in order to do that, we will change to directories, cd, var, and then www. 
If we do an ls here, you'll see that's the index.html. That's a file that tells you your web server is working. So we're going to use sudo vim, and you can name this file whatever you wish. And you'll say my, I'm just going to call it my server. But whatever you name it, it has to be end in PHP, myserver.php. And here we are in the Vim text editor. Of course, you have to add I to, or key in I, so you can start editing. So we use a, a bracket, question mark, space, question mark, space, and it's PHP info, and this is a function that calls the PHP info. You use parentheses after the PHP info and then a semicolon and another question another question mark bracket. And that's pretty much it for this this file. Then you hit the escape and then we're going to write qu quit the file. So this is sitting there in the var www directory. So now let's open up our browser on the desktop. In this case, we're going to go back to the Quetzal, Quetzal server and where it works. And we're going to do a slash here and use the name of the file, my server.php. Hit enter. And this gives you all the information. If everything's done correctly, you should get the version number of PHP in it all the information. This is what that PHP info function brings up. Of course you should not have this file in your www directory because if someone can hack into your system it gives it all kinds of information but this is good for basically checking and making sure everything works and if you need to get some information. So we know that PHP seems to be working. So the next step is check our MySQL server. Here's the Ubuntu 12.10 server again in this section, I will check the MySQL, make sure the MySQL database is working. So in order to do this, simply type in MySQL-U for user, in this case root, R-O-O-T, and then dash P for a password. This is a password that you gave MySQL when you first installed Ubuntu 12.10. So go ahead and put in that password. And you've got a lot of information here that MySQL gives you. And in this case, we're just going to create a database and make sure that it's working. Now, it doesn't have to be in capital letters. That's just when you're using SQL, that's a standard way of doing it. But you can use, if it's easier for you, you it's no problem using a lowercase. Create database db mine. And then you add with a semicolon. So it creates a database. And you'll see it say query OK, one row affected. So we're going to go to basically give grant all privileges on db score mine dot star to test user at localhost identified by and this is a password that you're entering right here. So um so the so that the test user can actually get into MySQL and make sure, uh, like I say, everything is made an error spelling privileges here. So let's, I'm going to hit enter, put the semicolon, hit enter and just show you what an error message is. This is the error message that you get. In this case, I'm going to go up, hit the up arrow and then correct the error on my privileges. Now hit enter. And you'll see a query OK, zero rows affected. And I'm going to exit. So now I have I've created a database and then I'm going to verify that it works. And then we'll go to my SQL dash U and we've got test 
underscore user dash p. The, if you want to, you can give it the database, which is db mine. Got to enter your password, and this is the password that you created for test user. And you've got that uh, screen. And so we're going to use show data bases. You've got your DB mine database. And so you've created a database. We haven't really done any work with it, but just verified that it worked. Exit. Forgot the semicolon. And again, this will be an error because I, I've. I've made a keyboarding error, so now I'm out of my SQL. I've demonstrated how to verify that the web server is working, how to set up a fully qualified domain name, updating or upgrading the server, PHP, verify that PHP is working, and verify that MySQL is working. One other thing that's really important but I haven't really covered, you may probably will have to check on the web on how to do this, is make sure that you have all as much security as you, you can enabled on your server. Thank you.